In section 3.4, we're going to talk about factorials and permutations. So how many lists of n items are there if it's made with n elements and there's no repeats? So that's our first question. So I've got n elements total, and I've got n items to pick from. So I know that the first one has n options, and then there's no repeats. So then I have n minus 1 options, and then n minus 2 and so forth. I'm going to use all of my things, so I'm going to end up at 1. Right, so I have this special number, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down to 1. And perhaps that you recognize this is n factorial. Right, so what we're going to define here n factorial. We're actually going to define it in terms of this, this concept. It's the number of lists with n items pulled from a set of n elements, and there's no repeats, so it's the way to rearrange these n items. But we know that it's going to be equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1 because of this multiplication principle. So let's look at that formal definition on the next page. So again, if n is a non-negative integer, so this works for positive integers 1, 2, 3, 4, but also for 0, then n factorial is the number of lists of length n that can be made from n symbols without repetition. So n factorial is just n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, all the way down to 1. And then 0 factorial, that one we have to think about. So 0 factorial should be equal to the number of lists of length 0 that can be made with 0 symbols. Right? Okay, so let's see if we can draw a, a list of length 0. All right, I made one. It's in this box here. It doesn't have anything in it. Right? So there's one way for me to do that. I just did nothing. So 0 factorial should be 1 because I just don't write anything. It's like this empty list, and that's the one answer. Now, that might not be a very satisfying answer. You'll be like, no, but you didn't do anything. Therefore, there's 0 lists. And I can, I can see why you might think that. But I want to try to convince you one other way that this is the appropriate way to define 0 factorial. So let's look at some patterns that we notice here. So we see that 1 factorial is 1. 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, so that's 2. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, so that's 3. 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, so that's, ooh, just kidding. Back here, 3 times 2, definitely not 3. It's 6, and so then I get 24 for 4 factorial. So how do I get from one number to the next? Here I multiplied by 2. Here I multiplied by 3. And here I multiplied by 4. Right, so I always multiply by the next number to go forward, which means to go backwards I should divide. So here I divide by 4. 24 divided by 4 gives me that 6. 6, I divide by 3 to get 2. 2, I divide by 2 to get 1. So then finally, to get back to 0, I should divide 1 by 1, because I haven't divided by 1 yet. 1 divided by 1 is 1. So following that pattern that we see, we do in fact get that 0 factorial. It does make sense for that to be 1 because I should be able to multiply that number by 1 to get to 1 factorial. And if it was 0 and I tried to multiply it by 1 to get to 1 factorial, I wouldn't be able to because 0 times anything is 0. So that's another reason why it makes sense here. So there is one list of length 0 that can be made with 0 symbols, and that is that empty list. So it's the list that doesn't have anything going on in there. So we're going to change gears here a little bit, and we're going to think about sets. So I'm going to have a set A. So for example, maybe I have the set 1, 2, 3. And now a permutation of A is just going to be a list of all of the elements of A without repetition. So a permutation is just all of the different lists I can get. So remember, in a list, order matters. I'm not allowed to have repetition. So I can't get more than three elements. And I can think about all of those possible different lists. But right, thinking about the possible lists, 
from this set. That's exactly what we've been doing before. So we can see that right, counting permutations is exactly the same as counting the lists of n elements using n items. So how many permutations should it have? It should have the cardinality of a factorial. So permutations are sort of exactly what we're thinking about when we're counting these things that had factorials. So we want to think of that as our definition of a permutation. It's you take all of the elements you have and you just put them in all of the different orders. And we know that there's going to be n factorial total ways to do that. So we're going to do something similar here to a permutation. I'm still going to have a set. It's going to have some elements in it. So I'm actually going to look at a specific example. So I've got this set capital A, the alphabet. Of, it's going to be all my lowercase letters from A to Z. So it's got those 26 elements. And I want to know how many lists we can make of length 3 here that can be pulled from this set of size 26. So now, again, I'm going to have not have rep repetition. So I'm going to have 26 options for that first letter, 25 for that second, and 24 for that third. And then I'm not going to keep going because I only have a list of length 3. So this type of thing comes up a lot. This is called a K permutation. Here it would be called a three permutation, I'll say, of n elements. So this is a three permutation of 26 elements, because I'm pulling three from a list of 26. But order matters here. So later we'll talk about what happens when order doesn't matter, but here order matters. And the number of ways to count this is just going to be n times n minus 1 all the way down until you have k items total here. So I end up subtracting away n minus k minus 1. Because if I think, right, that's 1 I'll have 2 all the way up to k minus 1, and then this will be my kth item here. So I do, do have those k different items. Now I could write that a little bit differently because I can distribute that negative. So it's n times n minus 1 down to n minus k plus 1. So again, I still have those k items. And because this is something that comes up a lot, we're going to give this a special number. So we'll call our special name. So we'll call this P and K. So it's just the number of ways to permute or to move around K items from a list of N items. This is also called a falling factorial. So you can also write this as N with a little sub K. And that's N falling factorial K. So it's the number of ways to permute those K items out of a set of N. Now this is going to be different, a different situation if I do allow repetition. So we do have to be careful, right? Because if I allow repetition, then there's 26 options for the first element, but still 26 options for the second and 26 for the third. So with repetition allowed, I actually just get 26 cubed. So be careful to distinguish between those types of options. All right, let's end with our discussion question here. So 10 contestants run a race. How many possible rankings are there for first, second, and third place? So think about this, and we'll discuss it in class.